Hi everyone, my name is Shawnee. Um, I'm just making this video of hopes that people will find my story and um, they'll reach out to me and share their story that are in the similar that have similar situations um, as my pregnancies and conditions. Um, even if they're not exact, feel free to reach out and tell me your story. Um, I just thought I'd share mine to connect with some people. Um, with that, I guess we'll just get started. Um, I went in for my first um, doctor's appointment, which I had an ultrasound. Um, my first doctor's appointment also, due to me having my periods. Um, 36 days apart, on average. Um, and so they did an ultrasound to determine um, how far along I was and to determine my due date since my periods were so far apart. Um, so I went in at 10 weeks and at my 10 weeks appointment, um, everything looked fine. She, it was good, found a heartbeat, everything. Um, about five days after my first doctor's appointment, I started bleeding, um, like really heavy period, like, and I have really heavy periods too. Um, I just didn't think anything of it, I didn't have cramping, so I was like, I, I knew she was fine. Um. And so, then, it was like a week later, at 11 weeks, I was still bleeding, and so I was a little concerned. I, was, I thought I should go get it checked out, so I went to the ER, because um, I started having clots, and so that's why I thought I should go to the ER. And, um, there, she looked fine, she found a heartbeat. What they did find out is... Um, I had a pocket of fluid, and so they thought maybe that pocket... So anyways, at the ER, they they found out I had a bicornate uterus, which I didn't know what that meant at the time, and what it does mean to you that don't know is instead of your uh, uterus being like oval, pear-shaped, um, my uterus actually, they told me it's like heart-shaped, and... So it dips down in the middle like this, and it's making two horns. Um, and the baby was in one horn, and in the other side of the horn they found um, blood. And they just determined that my bleeding was from, maybe I had fluid in the other side that was draining. They said everything looked fine, so they sent me home. At 12 weeks. I was still bleeding, so two weeks of bleeding, and which I knew everything was fine last week, but it was just weird that I was still bleeding, and I was concerned, so I called my OB, and I told them what happened, I went to the ER, and they said, well, come in, we'll do an ultrasound, so I went in, they did an ultrasound, everything looked fine, but the lady, she said, you said you're, she questioned me, she said, you're 12 weeks along, and I said, yes, and she said, who did your first, your very first ultrasound determining how far along you were? And I said, you guys did. I came here. And she's like, okay, you know. She's questioning it. She's like, your baby is measuring a week behind. That's just why I was wondering. But maybe my measurements or their measurements are off. It, it's not a big deal. I was like, okay. So anyways, everything was fine from then. Um... I went back to my OB for my regular doctor appointment where they ask if you want to do the genetic testing or I think that's what it is to determine like uh, syndromes or disabilities or whatever it is where they can just draw your blood from your arm and send it to get tested. Anyway, um, I, w I figured if I had a baby with a disability I would love it no matter what but I just I just had the feeling to say yes, so I went in and I got my blood drawn and they sent in the results. They called me back a week later and said, um, you have, um, a 3% 
chance of having of the baby having something wrong with it. Um, would you like us to refer you to over to the hospital to maternal fetal medicine, where they can do further testing for you? And I I went for it. I was like, sure. Even though I love the baby, no matter what, I I just had a feeling to go. So I went and. At that first appointment, they did the ultrasound because I guess they can look closely at the features and every little thing. And at that first appointment, so anyways, at that, and so I went to maternal fetal medicine at the hospital, which I was 18 weeks along then. And um, they, um, Sorry. Anyways, they said most likely it doesn't have downs, it doesn't have this, that, she said. Um, but the thing is, your baby is not only measuring at 18 weeks, but it's measuring at 16 weeks, so it's two weeks behind. And also, your baby has bright bowel, which I didn't know what bright bowel meant then, and I still don't know really exactly what it means now, but all I know is that um, the ultrasound, it shows that where her bowel area is, her intestines, they show bright white instead of like the grayish area that it usually does an ultrasound. And I guess by that it means that she has, that she still has something wrong with her. That's what bright bowel determines is that something is wrong with her in some disability way and, or that she has an infection inside of her. And so they just determined that that pocket of fluid that I had <coughs> when I went to the ER, um, that maybe she had swallowed it, my blood, and so that caused a reaction in her body or something. And because they tested me, they, blew, they drew my blood for the bright bowel for like different infections and diseases and she came back negative on all, all those that she was fine. So they just determined that she had swallowed some blood in my uterus that maybe it caused a reaction to show up like that on the ultrasound. And so since my baby was measuring smaller two weeks um, behind now that they made a go for it to schedule me once a month to come back for monthly appointments to check on her growth to make sure she's doing okay. And so, um, I went back at 22 weeks, and baby was measuring at 20 weeks, which we knew because she's measuring behind. But, um, the, also the weird thing is that they didn't catch up on is I had no morning sickness. I maybe threw up five times my whole pregnancy, but it was just from smells. I couldn't sound like um, perfumes and stuff like that. I never had morning sickness, anything. I ate perfectly fine, and I had lost 10 pounds for unknown reason, which I don't know still. But anyways, and then at 30 weeks, I went back and um, at 30 weeks, I just thought it was going to be a normal scan. I thought they were going to measure me and be like, okay, yep, she's still two weeks behind. See you in another month, you know. But this time, it was weird because the nurse, she, I mean, the ultrasound tech, she went out and said, let me go get the doctor. She's going to she's gonna take time to scan the baby and look over things, and she'll talk to you. And I was like, okay, you know. And, um... She, the doctor came in, she scanned me, everything. She said, well, I have to let you know that your baby's not only two weeks behind, but it's measuring now four weeks behind. Um, she said, the reason is that we were looking over the reason why your baby um, is not developing correctly is because her umbilical cord is not flowing properly. And for that word, they, it was called diastolic absent flow. If any of you have that too, let me know. Um, the, the placenta was healthy, but the cord just wasn't flowing correctly. Um, 
it, and because of that, she was considered IUGR, was, which is intrauterine growth restriction, which her growth, and the reason because she was diagnosed with that is because her growth was restricted because um, the umbilical cord wasn't feeding her correctly. And they say a lot of times with bicornate uteruses, placentas have a hard time attaching properly because it has small space to attach because it either attaches in this horn or this horn. And it's a small area for the placenta to attach properly instead of having this big round surface to it attach way good. Um, and by this, by this time, um, by this time, um, I had, at 30 weeks, um, so how I lost 10 pounds, I gained all those 10 pounds back, but only 2 pounds on top of that. So overall, I was only 2 pounds above my pre-pregnancy weight at 30 weeks. Um, they were concerned about that too, um, and they just, they still don't know why, but anyways, I'll explain more at the end. Um, so they admitted me to the hospital because this, they said this is more severe because now she was four weeks behind instead of two, and she does have diastolic flow in her umbilical cord which they said can turn to reverse flow, which reverse flow I didn't have, but reverse flow um, is from when the umbilical cord starts reversing its flow, taking the nutrients from the baby back into the placenta, instead of the placenta delivering the nutrients into the baby. But I didn't have that, I just had absent flow where it wasn't good flow. Anyways, so once they, they admitted me to the hospital, they said that I'd only be there for a week on monitoring, and then they'd see how things go, and then, and then, and then send me home if things needed to be. And, um, they said they'll give me steroid shots for her lungs, which, um, you have to have two rounds of shots 24 hours apart. So I had those within the first 24 hours I was there. Um, and I started out with NSTs, which is, um, they put monitors on, on my stomach to monitor her heart and contractions two times a day, morning and night. And that was the first week, and then they said after, and then I went down for another ultrasound, and they're like, we'll determine if this is to send you home or keep you here. They did another ultrasound, and they're like, well, we don't want to send you home because if things did get worse, that would be awful. You could lose a baby if her heart rate went out. Any, anyways, and um, so they're like, we're just going to keep you here until delivery. And, and I had no idea when that was going to be. And so, then they're like, well, we're going to, since we're going to keep you here, we're going to keep you on monitoring morning to night, and then you can sleep without the monitors on, so I'd have to have them on all day. They did that for a week, and then they're like, well, she looks really healthy, we'll just go back to NSTs, which is monitoring once morning, and one, monitoring once at night. So we went back to that. And, um, now I was at 34 weeks, so a total of four weeks in the hospital on bed rest, but I did get to walk around occasionally, um, when I was on monitoring through the hospital, hospital to get some exercise. Anyway, so at 34 weeks now, still in the hospital, um, they come in, they, it was Tuesday morning, they come in, um, they're like, hey, ready to put on the monitors for the morning, and they put them on, and in the first three to five minutes, her heart rate went down to 60, and then I just thought it was a flu, because it happened occasionally, and then another three to five minutes went by, she went back down to 60 on her heart rate, and it just kept happening for the next hour, her heart just kept going down to 60 every two to five minutes, I would say, and, um, they were like, okay, she was crying, so I had to grab her. This is the daughter I'm talking about that I was pregnant with anyways, so now you guys know. Um, okay, so they're like, well, it's time to deliver you. Her heart rate keeps dropping. We're not going to chance it anymore. It's time to get her out. 
and they told me the reason why her heart rate kept dropping is because the flow of the umbilical cord, um, it was so weak that it wasn't developing, it wasn't delivering enough blood or oxygen to her organs, which made her heart rate go out, and if they didn't catch that, if I wasn't at the hospital that day, um, she, she would have died, so I'm really thankful that they kept me there in bed rest, even though how much I hated it, I'm glad they kept me there, because now I have my daughter. But anyway, so she was born C-section because she was breached, but I'm glad because her heart wouldn't have be able to handle contractions, delivery, everything. Anyway, so I had her C-section. My husband was in there with me. Um, she was born at um, 3.30 p.m. and she was 2 pounds 7 ounces, 15 inches long. So her born at 34 weeks, 2 pounds, 7 ounces, that's an average 28 weeker on average, give or take. And so therefore, um, she, her whole growth overall, by the end she was born, she was behind by 6 weeks. So she was severe IUGR. So anyways, if any of you have um, stories similar to mine with a bicornet uterus and having IUGR babies. I would just like to hear your pregnancies because we're wanting to get pregnant again, but I'm just curious about how my next pregnancy is going to go. I know they're all different, but I just want to hear some stories. She's loving seeing herself. Anyways, um, yeah, and if you guys want to hear more about how her NICU stay went, how her developmental stages have gone, just let me know. I think I'll make a second video on that too. But anyways, comment below and reach out to me. Alright, thank you.